Day 27, Playlists Teaching. Playlists have already been discussed in the sense of delivering the channel's value proposition and for organizing content, but as we mentioned earlier, playlists also rank in search results along with channels and videos. In fact, while the videos in a playlist may not necessarily rank well on their own, a playlist of videos can sometimes outperform the individual videos themselves. That's why writing solid metadata for playlists is important and can bring a lot of views to a series of videos. When a playlist is highlighted in search results, it displays how many videos are in the playlist, the playlist's title, the name of the channel that created the playlist, the titles of the first two videos in the playlist, and the thumbnail of the first video in the playlist. For example, I searched YouTube for top music videos, and here's the very first result. Coincidentally, this is also a good example of how Google delivers search results based on the user's intent, not strictly by keyword matching. Compare my search query to the actual title of this playlist. Not only do playlists potentially bring new exposure to our videos in search results, but sending viewers into playlist mode displays a list of other videos in the playlist next to the video that's playing. This can help keep viewers on your videos longer. Below is what playlist mode looks like if the viewer is using the small YouTube player. If they're using the large player instead, selectable by clicking on the square in the bottom right of the YouTube player, the list of videos and playlist options drop below the video. You'll also notice buttons to watch the playlist on shuffle play, loop the playlist's playback, skip videos, and give the playlist a thumbs up. Percent 86. Personally, whenever I share a video, I usually share the playlist mode link that sends viewers into this view because of the extra potential for them to watch my other videos in the playlist. To do this, simply go to your playlist, click on the video you want to share, and use the URL you see in the address bar of your browser. Alternatively, when watching the video from your playlist, you can find the playlist mode URL by clicking on the share tab beneath the video. Another great feature of playlists is the ability to make a series playlist, which basically turns the playlist into an official series for the videos it contains. This has some pros and cons. On the downside, it means that videos in that playlist cannot be added to any of your other playlists. However, on the upside, whenever someone is viewing a video that's in a series playlist, the very first video at the top of the recommended videos is the next video in the playlist. Personally, I feel the benefit outweighs the potential drawbacks and put almost all of my videos into a series playlist. To do this, go to your channel's playlists and click edit next to the playlist you want to modify. At the top is where you can give the playlist a good title and description that you've. Percent 87 optimized both for reach and retention. Inside that view is where you can also rearrange videos, manually add new ones, add public notes for each video, adjust the start and end time for each video, and much more, but what we're interested in is the settings tab at the very top. Click it in the first checkbox is the option to, set as official series playlist for these videos. Check it and click save. And now your playlist is a series playlist that will feature the next video in the playlist at the top of the related videos for every video in that playlist. While we're talking about the playlist settings, you'll also notice in there a checkbox to add new videos to top of playlist. Sometimes when people have existing playlists and try to add new videos to it, it appears that the playlist isn't updating because, by default, new videos are added to the bottom of the playlist. Checking this option in the playlist settings will automatically add new videos to the beginning of the playlist instead. Due to the somewhat time-sensitive nature of my videos, I have this option checked on all my playlists because I want viewers to see my most recent content first. You may want to do the same. The other valuable element of playlists is that since they potentially drive more watch time to your other videos by keeping viewers on YouTube longer, they can be very beneficial in boosting how well your videos rank in search results. Furthermore, YouTube is making some big moves lately to further integrate playlists into the YouTube guide, the left sidebar on the site, and even adding a special tab for playlists to top of every channel. Organizing and curating your videos for others is very important. Tasks, first of all, let's ensure that the metadata for all your playlists is up-to-date and optimized both for reach and retention. Optimize the titles and descriptions of each of your playlists, especially the playlists that are displayed on the front of your channel. Give them titles that are especially descriptive and enticing for new viewers. 
Also, consider updating some of them to be a series playlist, too, if you don't already have some of the playlist's videos in other playlists. Percent 88 Using the directions I shared above, pick one of your videos to share to one of your social media accounts using the playlist mode URL. Even if you share it to Facebook or a blog where the URL will automatically embed the video, the next video in the playlist will still automatically play inside that same window. There's also a playlist button in the YouTube player that viewers can click to select a different video in the playlist. Pretty cool. Share the playlist URL to Facebook and see for yourself. Check all your playlists to ensure that you're highlighting appropriate videos in each one. Look at the list of videos in each playlist from the perspective of, if someone were watching this playlist, would the progression of videos make sense? Would it keep them engaged and watching more? Or are there videos in this playlist that feel a bit out of place and even randomly included? Resources, if you want a video walkthrough of how to set a series playlist, here you go. And yes, that link will send you into playlist mode. To learn more about some of the advanced features of playlists, like trimming videos and adding your own custom videos between other videos, check out this page from the YouTube Creator Playbook. Here's a walkthrough on how to create, edit, and delete YouTube playlists. Here's how to manage your playlists from a mobile device. Specifically, here's how to do it on iOS and on Android. Want to share your own playlist or someone else's? Here's how to do that. Just like YouTube videos, there's several privacy options available for playlists, including public, private, and unlisted. Want to embed a YouTube playlist into your blog or website? Gotcha covered. Percent 89 Promotional Opportunities Day 28, Social Media Teaching, as we now focus more on discovery outside of search results, there's several key strategies we'll discuss here. Today's strategy revolves around social media, specifically how we use it to reach new viewers. There's two primary ways I use social media to gain exposure to new viewers. One is by using hashtags and the other is by talking about influencers in my niche. If you're not already familiar with what a hashtag is, it's simply a word that's preceded with the hash sign and is used on Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Tumblr, Facebook, Vine, and other social media sites to easily group content together. For example, when Twitter users are watching the TV show, The Amazing Race, they often use the show's hashtag, hashtag Amazing Race, in their tweets. That way, if someone wants to keep up with the conversation on Twitter around the amazing race, they just click on the hashtag or search for it in Twitter and all the tweets using that hashtag appear. Whenever you post your video to a social media site that supports hashtags, do a few searches to see which relevant hashtags are most popular. Which ones are users interacting with the most? Pick a few of the top ones that are relevant to your video and use them in your post. Percent 90 with the exception of Vine, Instagram users seem to browse and interact with hashtags more than users on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and others. I don't have any official stats on this, it's just my experience so far. I try to take advantage of that. When my video goes live on YouTube, I sometimes post either a still frame image from the video or a custom made 15 second teaser video to Instagram, use Dropbox or an old fashioned cable to transfer the teaser video from your computer to your phone to post on Instagram. I'll give it a catchy description that teases the video's story, and tell users to tap the link in my bio to watch the full video. Of course, the link in my bio as my YouTube channel are temporarily updated to be the video's actual YouTube URL. Then I'll make the first comment on my Instagram post with several popular and relevant hashtags that I researched ahead of time. One little tip for this, if you make a custom 15 second teaser video for Instagram, make sure it has section in it that will make for a great still frame for users who see it in the hashtags feed. Give it a still frame that will spark curiosity and entice users to tap your image to watch the teaser video. My second social media strategy is to highlight different influencers in my videos who share my target audience. So if a YouTube network makes a big news announcement that I think is valuable for the audience on the video creator's channel, I'll talk about the announcement in a video and then, when I tweet it out, I'll let tag the YouTube network in the tweet. Often I'll get a retweet from that network, especially if a few of my own followers retweet and favorite it first and add a bit more value to the tweet. 
As soon as that YouTube network retweets me, they've just shared my video with their followers who are now exposed to my video. Some may think of this as the suck-up strategy, but I prefer to think of it as the add value to other people's communities strategy, although I admit the line between the two may be a bit blurry. Either way, it often works on me. If someone makes a valuable video discussing the video creator's community, I reshare that in a heartbeat. Finally, there's some low-hanging social media promotion fruit by simply connecting your Twitter account to your YouTube channel. By doing so, when a viewer clicks the thumbs up button to like your video and is choosing to automatically share that activity. Percent 91 publicly on Twitter, YouTube will it tag you in the tweet. This not only promotes your video, but it also promotes your Twitter account and potentially leads to more followers. Tasks, take a few minutes to research the hashtags in your niche. Check them on Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Facebook, and Tumblr, where they're called tags. You may be surprised by which social networks are the most active for hashtags that are relevant to your videos. Evaluate which hashtags are most active on each of the networks. What kind of content do users there seem to be engaging with the most? How can you enter into that conversation with relevant and valuable content that will lead to further exposure for your YouTube channel? What influencers in your niche could be relevant for discussions on your channel? Make a list of them and check to see where they're most active in social media. For me, Twitter and Google Plus have the highest success rate of resharing from influencers, so I'd recommend starting there, but there's also plenty of reblogging that happens on Tumblr, sharing on Facebook, repinning on Pinterest, etc. Then determine how you might integrate them into one of your videos in a way that adds value to them and their community. For example, if you're an animator, consider making a cartoon spoof of them. Or, if you're a gamer, take their latest tutorial, give it a great review and expand on it with key helpful points that may have been overlooked. Or, if you're a vlogger, just talk about how that person has influenced you or something. Get creative. There are a lot of possibilities. If you haven't already connected your YouTube channel to Twitter, go to your YouTube account's connected accounts page and link the two together. Resources, if you edit your videos in Premiere Pro, here's the settings I use to make Instagram optimized videos. Percent 92 The YouTube Creators Playbook has some suggestions for how to promote your videos, although they're mostly discussing paid promotion. If that's something you're interested in doing, check out the link. If you're looking for some Instagram tips for mastering that platform, check out Sue Zimmerman, at the Instagram Expert on Instagram. Percent 93 Day 29, Collaborations Teaching, Partnering with Others is usually a good strategy for life in general, but it's especially true when it comes to YouTube growth. But also like real life, we probably don't do it as much as we know we should. Collaborating with other YouTube creators is valuable because, when you appear in each other's videos and cross-promote each other, it introduces each of you to a new subscriber base. It's been very successful for many creators and can boost viewership and subscribers for both channels, especially when the two channels share the same target audience. I've done many different kinds of collaborations with a lot of different creators and have learned a couple things about how to do them well. First, just appearing in another creator's video and telling their subscribers that you have a YouTube channel will not get them to check it out. Viewers just think, yeah, good for you. I have a YouTube channel, too. So what? You have to keep your value proposition in mind and present yourself and your channel in a way that will cause the other creator's viewers to actually care about you and your content. If you can't get them to care about you or your value proposition, the collaboration was a waste of time for all parties involved. Second, when you reach out to another creator to collab, as they call it in YouTube world, contact them with an idea for the collaboration. This is especially true if you're reaching out to a bigger channel, don't just say, hey, I'm Carol. Wanna collab with me? Actually pitch your idea for the collaboration. And the less work the other party has to do, the better. This will make it easier for them to say yes. Third, I've found that it's always valuable to collaborate with channels of any size. Often creators just want to collaborate with channels with around the same number of subscribers or more, but there's always value in building relationships with other people, even if they don't have as many subscribers as you. Plus, whatever subscribers you gain. 
percent 94 from the collaboration will be more subscribers than you had before even if it's just a few from someone else's very small channel Finally, if you're reaching out to a larger channel that has no prior relationship with you, the best way you can get them to agree to a collaboration is if you can offer some sort of value to them and their community that the creator doesn't have access to on their own. For example, if you write music and perform on your channel, offer to write an original track for the other creator to use in one of their videos. Or, if you have some skills with visual effects, create an asset they can use in an upcoming video. Most of the time when these creators see that you have talent that can offer value to one of their videos, they'll love to work with you in exchange for giving you a shout out. But all that said, here's the best piece of advice I've ever heard in terms of collaboration. It's from Hank Green, one of the creators of the Vlogbrothers, one of the most respected channels on YouTube, almost all top YouTube channels were part of a group of YouTubers that came up together and helped each other along the way, not via established YouTubers promoting them. It's happening right now with the cute boy British YouTubers. It happened in 2007 with us and Charlie and Michael and Alex. It happened in 2009 with Tessa, Mitchell, Kat, and Shauna. Hannah, Andrew, Mamrie and Grace in 2011. There are exceptions to this, but it's much easier and more fun if you're doing it with friends whose work you're excited about and who are excited about your work. One-off collaborations here and there are great, but they take a lot of work to pull off and aren't nearly as beneficial as a group of friends linking arms and growing together. My wife tried this for a while with our family's vlogging channel at youtube.com shmovies. We have a group of friends on YouTube who are also family vloggers and together we came up with a list of ideas of how we could grow together. Do Google Plus Hangouts on air together, rotating from one channel to the next each month so we each get introduced to each other's viewers. We played Pictionary. Percent 95 together and invited each of our audiences to join us on the other family's channel to help us guess answers, but you could do almost anything. Feature each other's channels in your end cards. Tweet each other's videos, commented on them on YouTube, and talk about them in your own videos. Link to each other's channels in the description text of your videos. Feature each other as a recommended channel to your own channel. Make tag videos where you each answer the same list of questions for each other. Make challenge videos where each of you has to make a video attempting the same challenge. Depending on your niche, not all of these ideas will be appropriate, but you get the idea. Find a few other creators and grow together. That way, as one channel picks up a few subscribers, all the others have a greater chance of picking up those same subscribers, too. If you're new to YouTube or don't know anyone who could grow with you, start by finding a few other channels who are in a similar place as you that you think could be a good fit together. Then start engaging with those creators regularly. Comment on their videos, reply to their tweets, and start building a relationship. As the relationship grows over time, do a collaboration or two and eventually work to the place where all of you can continually support each other. Tasks, I bet you can guess what your task is for today. Reach out to another creator with an idea for a collaboration. Percent 96 If you know a few YouTubers that you could foresee being a good fit for an ongoing collaboration relationship, draft a few ideas of what that could look like and approach those creators about it. Resources, I interviewed Sarah Fit about how she grew her YouTube channel through strategic collaborations. Some great stories here about who to collaborate with and when. Here's two ideas that a group of creators are doing to collaborate with each other on an ongoing basis. If you want to collaborate with some top YouTube creators, here's how to do it. Perhaps one of the most difficult of collaborating is just finding others to collaborate with. Here's some tips on how to find people for collaborations. Here's a few examples of how others have done collaboration videos in the past. Percent 97 Day 30, Seeding Your Videos Teaching, If you have videos you want people to see, it might be encouraging to hear that there are many high-traffic websites and blogs out there that are looking for videos to share. The only thing you have to do is make quality content that those sites want to share and then get it on their radar. Easy, right? Not really, but the payoffs can definitely be worth it. There's two approaches to seeding your videos. 
The first is the normal approach you might be thinking of as you read this, make a video, publish it to your channel, and then send it out to various blogs and websites hoping one of them shares it with their community. This approach can be successful, but you almost definitely have to build a relationship with the site's authors first. That's why it's often smarter to start with smaller blogs and websites. As you start small and grow, your channel will grow with it and, over time, you'll have the numbers that will get the attention of the big sites. When taking this approach, don't underestimate other online communities, too, like Facebook groups, Facebook pages, Google Plus communities, and online forums. Join a couple of them and, if you really enjoy one of them in particular, reach out to one of the admins of the group to introduce yourself. Maybe share what you like about the group so far, too. Those relationships can go a long way in tight, online communities. The second approach is kind of a cross between seeding and collaboration. Instead of making a video and hoping someone shares it, reach out to a blog's author or online community's administrator and pitch a video idea that could be valuable to their community. If they like it and express interest in seeing a video like that, go ahead and make it as quickly as possible and send them the YouTube link. If the video is good, almost every time that author or administrator will post the video for you. Given that person's reputation with the community, this will always work better for your video than if you posted it yourself. This is exactly what I did with a client's project about a year ago. We wanted to make four videos based on a few articles on lifehacker.com, a website with millions of readers. We reached out to the authors of each post, showed them some of our other videos, percent 98 and pitched our video ideas. Each of the authors loved the ideas and even hopped on Skype to record some audio for us. When the videos were finished, we uploaded them to our YouTube channel, notified the authors, and each video was quickly published to Lifehacker's site. The result, hundreds of thousands of views, thousands of new subscribers, a lot of people sharing the video, a credible backlink to the video, and plenty of exposure for other videos on our channel. I prefer this second method of seeding to the first because you're not wasting time making videos that you hope a site will pick up one day. You already know ahead of time that the community you're targeting is interested in it. Plus, you can help the community's author or administrator feel invested into the process if they so desire. And along the way you've built a stronger relationship than you would have if you just fired off your latest video and hoped for the best. Tasks, it's time to start building relationships with other online communities. Start by searching Facebook and Google Plus for a couple groups and communities that are relevant to your content. Join them and start interacting. When it becomes appropriate to do so without violating any community guidelines, either written or not, share one of your videos. Also consider showing one of your videos privately to an administrator. If it's valuable, sometimes they'll share it for you. Search the web for a few blogs and online forums that might be interested in your videos. Subscribe to them and follow their work. Over time, do your best to contribute value to those communities through comments, posts, sharing their content, and, of course, sharing your own videos with them. Resources, YouTube has a couple tips for getting the word out about your videos through seeding your content. Percent 99 Here's an interview I did with Kevin Nolte about promoting your videos through seeding them to blogs and websites. And here's some advice on how to seed your videos specifically to niche influencers. Percent 100 Bonus Content, Audience Development Congratulations. You completed the 30 days. Wow. Great job. If you did your best to accomplish each of the assigned tasks, your channel is now humming in tip-top shape. By my random guesstimation, it's in the top 5% of strategically optimized channels on YouTube. I hope you feel proud of what you've done because some of these tasks required quite a bit of work. I'm confident all that hard work will pay off as you continue to spread your message, change lives, and offer value to your subscribers. While the past 30 days covered a lot of material, there's a couple things that will separate the top 5% from the top 1% of YouTube channels. Most of those things revolve around audience development. That is, how your videos are building a community that converts subscribers into a loyal army of subscribers. If our YouTube channel is like a restaurant, so far we've put the building in order, we've sent out invitations for guests to check us out, and some have accepted. 
Now we have to ensure that the guests have a good experience and enjoy the food so they come back time and time again. Better yet, we want to build a relationship with them. This bonus content will help you fine-tune some final things on your channel to make it as easy as possible for viewers to interact, engage, and, most importantly, influence each other's lives in a positive way. As the leader of this community, it's up to you to remove as many barriers as possible that may prevent viewers from engaging with you and each other. Percent 101 Crafting Effective Videos Day 31, Video Tone Teaching, Overall, the tone of your videos should feel like the channel is fostering a community of people around its content. The goal is to make viewers feel like they're a part of something bigger, like they have some sort of relationship with you and the other viewers. As soon as they feel like they're simply a statistic, a number in a pool of subscribers, the communal feeling begins to quickly dissipate. Now, there's a difference between having a lot of subscribers and having a community. Many channels on YouTube have millions of subscribers with very little community, and many smaller channels have a very tight-knit community. But the strength of the community is not tied directly to how many subscribers a channel has, it's tied to the values of the creator. Creators who tend to use YouTube as a place to get attention and be famous have much different communities than creators who are sincerely trying to give of themselves for the sake of others. When we sit down to evaluate the tone of our videos or someone else's videos, it's hard to do because it's so subjective. It's not like you can point to one or two methods of facilitating community and say, yes, the tone of these videos are building community. Furthermore, every channel has a different personality and style. A method that works great on one channel may be inappropriate on another. That's why the approach each channel takes to building community will be different. Even so, you can still feel something about the overall tone of a video about how it may or may not be facilitating community. Percent 102 Tasks First, watch a few of your latest videos and pay attention to the tone and overall vibe. I know this is a hard thing to do because each of us think all our videos are great and awesome. And honestly, they might very well be great and awesome, but let's not blindly make that assumption. How would you describe the tone of your videos? Do you feel like you're hitting the kind of tone you're trying to achieve? How conducive is this tone for building the kind of community you have in mind? If you have thick skin and are open to some constructive criticism, ask a friend to give you some feedback about the tone of your videos. Better yet, ask your friend to invite one of their friends over who's never seen your videos and is in your target audience. Get their overall feedback about the tone of your videos. How can you improve the tone of your videos to be more conducive for facilitating interaction between you, the viewers, and the viewers amongst themselves? Jot down a list of ideas and try each of them out in a couple videos. Resources, I did a video collaboration with the Social Blade YouTube channel where I discussed several big ideas for how to foster the community around your channel. Here are some ideas on how to build your channel's community from the ground up. Moz has an interesting infographic on, how to build a brand of awesomeness, that doesn't talk about YouTube communities specifically, but does have good principles that apply. Percent 103 Day 32, Primal Branding Elements Teaching, today's discussion is one that could fill an entire book by itself. And, in fact, it does. In his book, Primal Branding, Create Zealots for Your Brand, Your Company, Your Future, Patrick Hanlon looks at top brands that have a massive and loyal following and asks, why do people care so intimately about those brands? He analyzed each of them and broke down the answer into seven elements. The great thing is that his principles apply just as easily to a YouTube channel as they do to brands. We'll briefly look at some of them here today, but you should definitely read his book for a better understanding of how all this works. Here's the seven pieces of the primal code that create zealots for your channel, shared with permission from the author, 1. Creation story, telling viewers your creation story is the crucial first step in providing answers to why people should care about you. It's the backstory of who you are, where you came from, how you go to where you are today, and any adversity you had to overcome to get here. The creation story helps set up the further pieces of the primal code because it provides context and meaning. Practical ideas for your channel, make a video that creatively tells your creation story, like the Draw My Life videos that were so popular in 2013. Annotate to that video at the end of every video in your end card so new viewers can quickly and easy learn your creation story. 
Tell your creation story often as new people continue to discover you. Regularly talk about it and point back to it in your videos and content. Percent 104 on YouTube, most of us are familiar with Shea Carl and Philip DeFranco, both of whom are very popular partially due to their strong creation stories, average working guys who found YouTube and, despite opposition, grew to overcome it. 2. The Creed, the Creed is the singular notion that you want people to believe. For example, in America, our country's creeds include things like, all men are created equal, and, in God we trust. These are belief statements that cause people with similar beliefs to rally together. Practical ideas for YouTube, be able to succinctly state what you believe and what your channel represents. Make it a part of every video you do. My free ebook, The Secret to Building Your YouTube Audience, can help you work through some questions that will help you discover the belief behind your channel. A belief statement for your channel is so important because, if you're trying to build a community, people always bond together more easily and quickly over shared beliefs than anything else. This is true both online and offline. Big differences that would usually cause division are pushed aside when a shared belief is identified and then made actionable with a shared vision. In the example of video creators, the belief I hold is that many YouTube creators have messages that can change lives. Those who share that belief with me rally more quickly behind my channel than those who don't. A great example of this on YouTube is the Vlogbrothers channel. They have creeds like, DFTBA, don't forget to be awesome, and, decrease world suck. 3. The icons, visual icons should attract attention and assert values of authority, leadership, and confidence. And they should provide relevance and summon feelings for the brand. Practical ideas for YouTube, we've already looked at your channel's branding, but this should reinforce the fact that iconic representations of your channel and message can help users form a percent 105 sense of alliance to it. It's also interesting to note that icons can be auditory, like a regular and consistent jingle in every video. If you look at channels like Black Nerd Comedy, Toby Turner, Vice, CTFXC, and others, you'll quickly notice what their icons are and how it represents them well. 4. The Rituals Rituals are the repeated interactions that people have with your channel. They seem like regular, ordinary events in their daily routine, but are turned into special moments that makes your channel stand out. Practical ideas for YouTube Be intentional about making rituals a part of your channel. We discussed this a bit when we talked about things like publishing consistency, frequency, and predictability. It's part of why making your channel become a ritual in your subscribers' weekly routine is so important. In-video rituals are also important. For some of us, an easy one includes similar call-to-actions, like commenting, liking, favoriting, sharing, subscribing, etc. But it also include the actual flow of the video, sayings that are repeated, and more. Toby Turner is a great example of someone who's built rituals into each of his vlogs that his subscribers have grown to love. If you're familiar with his channel, then you'll recognize sayings like, intro of darkness, then redness, then whiteness, and, if you sneezed during this video, bless you. If he missed one of those rituals, the video would feel totally weird. 5. The Pagans, part of saying who you are and what you stand for is also declaring who you are not and what you don't stand for. Doing so defines your Pagans, or non-believers, which is important in defining who you are. As a creator, once you understand who the Pagans are, those who do not and perhaps never will understand you, you open up new opportunities to be who you are and who you have the potential to become. Practical Ideas for YouTube Percent 106 I know each of us loves the idea of having everyone on YouTube subscribing to our channel, but that hasn't happened for anyone ever. In fact, according to Hanlon, you actually need pagans because it's critical in helping your own community bond together. But for that to happen, you must first know what you believe and what you stand for in order to have any non-believers in the first place. The saying is true, if you don't stand for anything, no one will stand with you. An example of adversity solidifying a community happened in 2013 to a popular YouTuber named Joey Graceffa. He parked his car in front of a man's driveway and left. When he returned, he realized his car had been towed and promptly made a video saying some very unkind things about the man. But a few days later, the man made his own video about the parking incident. 
He made fun of Joey, responded to the things Joey said about him in his video, and revealed the truth of what actually happened. The video quickly went viral, causing Joey's fans to instantly bond together over the unfair treatment while his pagans united together in laughter. Because of the adversity, Joey's community is now stronger and tighter now than it ever was before. Hopefully your community will bond over a more Nobel cause. 6. The sacred words, all belief systems come with a set of specialized words that must be learned before people can belong. If you know the language, you belong. Classic examples include, religious organizations, Holy Ghost, Communion, Lord's Prayer, Starbucks, Triple, Venti, Soy, No Foam Latte, Quad Grande, Non-Fat, Extra Hot Caramel Macchiato Upside Down, Sports Teams, Run a Bootleg, Shoot from Downtown, Backdoor Slider, Technology Circles, GB, Ram, HDD, Practical Ideas for YouTube, On YouTube, Maybe You've Heard of Beard Lovers, Mooshers, I'm Vlogging Here, mythical beasts, and super note. Each of these sacred words were introduced to percent 107 a channel's community by its creator. Today, if I'm in a restaurant and learn that a complete stranger is also a nerdfighter, we instantly have some kind of connection because of that sacred word.